Our next speaker is Melissa Vaught, a cross-sectional study of commentators and commenting in PubMed 2014 to 2016, who's who in PubMed comments. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, and thank you for the honor of being able to talk to you at the, the Peer Review Congress today. Um, I should also, of course, thank my co-authors who are here at the conference as well, Diana Jordan and uh, Hilda Bastian. Uh, now, it's important for me to uh, disclose to you at this point that all three of us uh, work at the National Center for Biotechnology Information, or NCBI, and that includes work on PubMed Commons, which is, of course, the topic of my presentation today today. Um, so if you're not familiar with PubMed Commons, this is a post-publication commenting venue within PubMed. So these uh, comments posted here appear directly below abstracts in PubMed. This was launched in 2013 in response to interest from the scientific community. And a couple of key features uh, that are important for PubMed Commons. One is that there are no anonymous comments uh, or accounts or pseudonyms that are allowed. So essentially all of this is signed post-publication uh, post commenting. And then uh, we do moderation after comments are posted. Uh, PubMed Commons membership is open to any author of a PubMed Index publication. And then in 2015, we introduced a mechanism for journal clubs to join PubMed Commons. So on this slide, on uh, the left-hand side, this graph going from top to bottom is showing the accumulation of uh, comments, publications with comments, and unique accounts posting comments uh, since the inception of PubMed Commons. And the data that uh, is summarized on the right-hand side of that screen is specifically or limited to the period of January 2014 to December 2016. Uh, and you can see that uh, over that three-year period, we've got about 4,400 publications with about 5,500 comments coming from a, a various number of, uh, of accounts. And that there's a really a big difference between uh, commenting activities across accounts. Uh, so about 60% uh, of individual accounts comment once and only once, whereas journal clubs, it's, only, uh, it's less than 20% that comment only once. Uh, in addition to those 5,500 active comments, there are an additional 268 comments which were removed by moderators during that three-year period. Uh, and we also note that there was a similar number of comments which were deleted by users themselves. So last year we reported on a content analysis for uh, a period of time with PubMed Commons, and we sort of assembled this synopsis of what we consider to be a typical comment within PubMed Commons. Uh, down in the corner is the link for our OSF uh, Open Science Framework, which you'll see again at the end, uh, and you can find a copy of that poster there. Um, but one of the key things about PubMed Commons is that it really seems to be a place that's uh, to anchor contextual information or to discussion, some of which may be happening elsewhere, and there's not a lot of back and forth uh, between commenters that's happening on PubMed Commons. Uh, for the study that I'm talking about here, though, we wanted to get a better sense of who is commenting on PubMed Commons, and for this, we took a six-month subset from July to December of 2016. Um, so this is just to show you that the proportion of comments and publications um, is similar to what we would expect, uh, similar to the distribution across the, that three-year period. Um, and in keeping with our previous analysis from another time period, we once again see that about 20% of the comments are contributed by authors. Uh, and so for this, uh, this investigation, we reviewed the comments um, looking for evidence of multiple authors that would be contributing to uh, comments. Uh, and we were actually, so on the previous slide, uh, I told you about that we had these number of of commenters on PubMed Commons. That's not entirely accurate because a lot of these comments, or number of comments actually have multiple authors listed within the text of those comments. Um, so we have about 21% of the comments with multiple authors. Um, that is coming from eight PubMed Commons journal clubs. Uh, and then there were 324 individual PubMed Commons accounts that were naming an additional 69 co-authors. Uh, we looked at the demographics for those individual members and additional co-authors. So we do not collect any demographic information when people sign up for PubMed Commons. So this was done through um, a mix of uh, name matching for gender and then searching uh, to resolve some, some ambiguous issues with gender uh, and then searching for 
the commenter country as well. So uh, we found that 21% of those commenters uh, were women. But what was really interesting was to see that breakdown across the type of comments, uh, where individual comments, 22% of those were being contributed to women, but women were named in 82% of the uh, multi-author comments that were being posted. When we looked at the country for those uh, same commenters, they were predominantly found in uh, five primarily English-speaking countries, so that was more than 60% from those five countries. Uh, the largest proportion of commenters comes from the US uh, at 36%, and then next was the UK at 16%. Um, together, commenters from Europe and North America were 85% of that uh, commenting population. Um, and then we also took a look at the comment text to see how often people disclosed conflicts of interest. Um, and during, out of those 953 comments, we identified 23 disclosures. And often those were basically just uh, notes to say, I have nothing to disclose or I have no conflict of interest. So um, I've given you this really quick overview of some of the things that we've been looking at for PubMed Commons to really better understand its use, um, but we've really been considering a vast range of, of elements that might be important for evaluating PubMed Commons and that we think are relevant for evaluating post-publication commenting in general as well. So the most widely uh, reported value, I would say, would be the total number of comments. Um, but we feel that this really doesn't provide a clear picture of what's going on with post-publication commenting. Um, in particular, we think that there are three additional factors to consider. Um, one of those is moderation, so the number of comments that are being removed from, uh, from post-publication commenting, uh, as well as things like the unique number of records that are getting comments, as well as the unique number of contributors. And of course, what I've just shown you uh, during my presentation is that you can't rely on the number of accounts that are commenting to give you that information as some of these may be coming from multiple authors. Um, and then of course things like the unique records, you also need to be thinking about what the denominator for that value is, how that's being distributed across disciplines. Um, another thing to think about is content analysis. This of course starts getting into uh, work that requires significantly more effort than assessing some of these other factors. Um, we have done a degree of content analysis for PubMed Commons. Uh, we have also been uh, working on developing a, uh, an assessment instrument to evaluate the implications of comments and other post-publication activities for, uh, for publications. Um, we also think, though, there's a, a limit to what we at PubMed Commons should be doing with regard to content analysis, um, given our own conflicts of interest here, particularly when it comes to things like the impact um, or the value of, uh, of commenting. Um, and our approach to some of this is trying to be transparent with our evaluations. So where possible, we're uh, trying to publish our evaluations with open data. And then, um, as I mentioned, we do have uh, a site on the Open Science Framework. Um, there you'll be able to find a copy of our poster from the AAAS meeting last year. And then we will also be adding our slides from the Peer Review Congress to that. You can also find the other post-publication projects that PubMed Commons is working on. Uh, so thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Melissa. As people get to the microphones, yeah, I was going to um, ask a question about how you think about the world of comments on PubMed Commons in the context of all the other commenting platforms that are out there for every article um, in terms of service to readers and how they might sort of collect all the post-publication comments that are coming together. Uh, yeah, so I think that there are a couple of things. One of the, the places where I think PubMed Commons fits in is that there are a lot of journals that don't have commenting features. Um, mm -hmm. And in fact, the, there have been journals that have been dropping their commenting features mm -hmm. over the years. Mm -hmm. So that was part of the issue of being sure that there is a place where people would be able to comment and it would be somehow more directly connected with the publication than mm -hmm. um, you know, than just sort of putting it up on a blog or mm -hmm. Twitter or whatever mm -hmm. that might be. Um, you know, I think we're 
kind of in the works of trying to get an, uh, an API so that others would be able, you know, if journals wanted to pull the comments from PubMed Commons into their own site, that that would be, uh, be something that was available to them. Right, thank you. Yeah, so there's a question here at the mic. Very interesting. Uh, thank you, Mutaz Haval from Florida. Uh, one, one question in your content analysis, uh, because I get comment as an editor all the time, and uh, what percentage is uh, productive and what percentage is counterproductive? <laughs> Be being an editor, you, you get both of them and you started realizing which one you pick. Uh, mm -hmm. So can you comment on that? Um, so we have not evaluated that sort of, of element of the content analysis. Um, you, we, we did sort of consider that, should we be evaluating which comments are substantive um, or productive? Um, there are two challenges there. One is that the breadth of PubMed is, of course, so much larger than a single journal that having the expertise to understand which things are really productive or, or substantive comments um, it, it becomes really difficult. And then the other aspect of that, again, is that that conflict of interest for us of, you know, we're not entirely sure if that's something we are really well positioned to evaluate or if that's something that the community um, should be taking on instead. Any other questions? Yeah, okay, this one here. This may be very simplistic and I could see inherent problems with it, but it seems like it might be relatively easy to just contact the authors and ask them if they think the comments contributed anything to their overall publication. Yeah, that would certain, that's certainly something that we could consider for a future direction. Um, you know, I think one of the, the challenges might be getting responses out of authors. Um, so we do notify authors when comments are posted to their publications. Um, but even with that notification, you see that we get an 8%, uh, about 8% of our comments are, are replies from the authors. So there, um, the engagement there might be a, a bit of a challenge. Oh, okay, I'll ask one more question um, since we have time. Um, and I probably should know this and I don't. So for the comments, because uh, you asked the question about how authors find them, but presumably also one of their main functions is for readers. Are the comments automatically visible to someone coming to the site or do they have to click to see them? And if so, how many people actually can you see or how many readers are actually seeing the comments that are posted? Right, so the way that these are set up, the comments up here in PubMed Commons, is that if you click to read the abstract of an article, that comment will appear directly below the abstract. And so that will be visible to them uh, immediately. And in the results, uh, the summary results display of, of uh, PubMed, there will also be a little note there that if there are any comments, it will tell you how many comments are on that. Uh, in terms of the number of people who are reading comments, we don't have a good way of measuring that because they are kind of tied into those PubMed records. All right, thank you. Thank you.